Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green. And I'm your presenter, Paul Sheriff. And we are continuing our mini series on building apps with XAML and .NET MAUI. And in the previous episode, we saw how to bind controls to other controls. Today, we're going to go a little step further than that. Right, Paul? What are we going to do? Yeah, we're going to take a look at now creating things in C Sharp, uh, which is, you know, what most of us have. We have a bunch of classes and stuff, and we want to bind those classes up because that's what's going to fill in the data for our screens. Right. Yeah. All right. Before we do that, however, I did want to kind of, because a lot of people ask, they say, you know, having this hard coded down here, if I wanted to have that same picker and use it on a few other screens, I have to copy all of that. Well, that's not something we generally want to do. <laughs> right. So let's go ahead and cut it out of here. Let's go over to our app.xaml, right? So if you remember, this is where we're able to put in things like in our app styles, right? We did all of that. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is I want to add this as a resource here now. To be a good resource, we need to make sure it has a key to it. I'm going to call it phone types. Mm. So this is just another resource, just like in that app styles. If you remember the app styles that we created, mm -hmm. app styles, sorry, there we go. We create like a string resource and a double resource. Yeah. All we're doing now is creating an array that is now a resource. So that means that down here, what I can do is I can eliminate the item source part here. I can then set the item source property to that static resource called phone types. Nice. So that, you know, does a couple of things. Number one, it kind of simplifies the code here, but it also makes it so that's a reusable array of strings that you could use on other places throughout your application. Okay. So if you're just going to use it once in one place, you can just leave it in line. But the second you need to use it twice. Right. The second you, the second you copy and paste it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It tells you there's got to be a better way. Absolutely. Sweet. Absolutely. It's kind of just like in C Sharp, right? I mean, if you're refactoring code, you know, you know you're going to use something and you want to just make a little tweak to it, then you, you basically cut it out and you put it in a new class or something. Right. So, and that's all we're doing. Cool. Yeah. All right. So now let's go ahead and start really start building this up. I'm going to add a new project now into our solution. This will be a class library. And I'm going to call it adventureworks.entity layer. And I'll make sure we're using .NET 7 or if .NET 8 is out, feel free to use that. None of this should be changing. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and delete this class one. I'm going to add a new folder called entity classes here. And then into this, I'm going to add a class. So we're kind of classy people over here. So we like to use classes. Well, I am. I don't know about Robert. <laughs> sure he's been out on that for a while. But <laughs> All right. So I'm going to create this user class here, all right? Okay. And it's just got a simple little constructor that just initializes things. And if we look at all of these properties here, what do those look like? Those look like exactly what we're seeing on that user details screen that we've been creating, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. So now if we go over here and I've got this in this entity classes over here, make sure it builds, of course. So hopefully everything will build. And once it's built, you can now come over here and right mouse click on the dependencies and add a project reference over to that entity layer so that we're then able to use any of the classes within that project. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go to our user detail view. Now, I want to do some binding up. So if I need to get over to there, what do I have to do? You got to add another namespace. That's right. So... Now I'm going to just simply call this one. Okay. This one's actually going to be my view model. So there even though it's right click, add namespace here, don't you think? Pardon? There should be a right click, add namespace. <laughs> little dialogue that comes up. Yeah. Yeah. I need to put somebody needs to put that in, uh, in, um, that's the word I'm looking for. Where do you go to, to make we'll features? Put that in one of our, yeah. Put that in GitHub so they can add that there as a little, Say, so, hey, here's a new feature we'd like, feature request. So, all right. So I've added this XML namespace and I'm calling it view model. 
Then here's what we're going to do. We're going to add an X colon beta type here. And I'm going to type in user and you'll see user and then in parentheses, it tells me the namespace that's, that that class is within. So if I just hit tab there, it puts it into the right format. What this is doing is this is identifying to this content page the overall class that you're going to be using to bind here. And why we do that is so we can get IntelliSense within Visual Studio. All right. Now, within this content resources, here's what I'm going to do. View model user. And then I'm going to give it a key name. And I'm going to simply call it view model. And then look at this. All of our properties now show up here. Isn't this cool? Mm -hmm. All right. So all we have to do is start filling in the data. And I've already got it here, so we don't want to have to watch me type all of that. So there we go. I have now created an instance of the user class. This right here, when this runs, it creates an instance of the user class and assigns the properties to these values. So if I have a real instance of something, I can now start binding these properties to each of those entry controls. But here's the thing, this border is the kind of the parent now, right, of all the other controls. So what I can do is I can set the binding context one time here. All right, so I'll do the static resource view model. Okay, by doing this, it means that I don't have to do the binding context on each individual entry control. All right, so now what I can do those for the text, I can now do a binding. And look at that, it gives me my list here. So this is the login ID. Okay, if I didn't do the binding context up here, I would actually have to put this on every single entry control. But Microsoft said, well, you shouldn't have to do that. That would be just silly. So they say, if you put it at the parent level, so and all these other children underneath it, hey, we'll go ahead and assume that you're, you're good. Do okay. you do it at the, can you do it at the content page level, at the highest, highest level, or does it have to be at the first okay. container so level? The question is, can we put it up here, right? Can you do this binding context up here? So again, if we come down here and we take a look. Okay, cool. So really it's fine, even though, you know, you kind of think that, well, this is coming before where we're actually defining it, but it does seem to actually, because it all is getting compiled down, right? Right. So, yeah. Now, the personally. The community was uh, the words that were escaping me, by the way. Ah, yes. Oh. So you could yep. uh, make that feature request. There we go. Developer community. All right. <laughs> yeah. Now, I digress. Now you digress. So, but personally, I do like putting it here at my kind of my parent level because that's the place that I'm looking most often. Okay. So, yep. But that's that's just me. I mean, you know, again, there's absolutely nothing wrong with putting it up there either. So, right. So what we would do is we would simply go through and we do the bindings on each one of these, like so. Right. I mean, it's really simple. Try to do these as quick as I can here by finding email. All right, so then we get down here, we got the check boxes. Now, the check boxes obviously are not on a text property, they're on the is checked property. Okay, so this one is the is enrolled in 401k. Mm -hmm. And then this next one is checked, would be a binding to the is enrolled in flex time. So we just keep doing this little by little, we just build this up is enrolled in healthcare. And then our last one here on the radio buttons is, is enrolled in HSA. Mm -hmm. All right, the switch, right? So we do actually have, you know, switch control as well. This one is, is toggled. So it's okay. not a, you know, checked or anything. It's actually a toggle. And I actually have an is active property in there that we can use mm -hmm. for that. So that's that still employed. Okay. Now, down here, we start getting into the radio buttons. So again, it's on the is check, isn't it? So it's the binding is full time. And then on the radio button here, this is checked. Okay, let's set this one here. It is checked. This one is a binding on, uh, ouch. Sorry, just hit my thing. I'm still gonna bind on the is full time because I don't have an is part time. 
But what am I going to use? My converter. converter. Yeah, if you remember, I had that nice little inverted Boolean converter. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? So Beautiful. And that's a really good example of using a converter like that, where you've got a single value, but you've got two radio buttons. That's where you're probably going to use this most often. Okay. So on the date picker, we're going to bind to the date property there, and we're going to bind the birth date. And here in the time picker, we're going to bind up to the, uh, what is it, the uh, start time. Yep, I don't remember what my names are there. <laughs> now, okay, on this one, let's see. So is this one? Right. So this one, we're not going to do our binding context here anymore, okay, uh, because we want our binding context to actually go to the binding context of the parent. So we're going to change this to back to what it really should be. So instead of actually binding to the is check, we're going to actually still bind it to the is full time, right? So if we're not full time, I'm converting it, then this will become enabled, right? And also that start time will be set. Right. So I've got two different kind of bindings there. All right. Now the picker. So we're down here on the picker and we've got the items source. But what about, what about the selected item? Okay, well, the selected item would be a binding to, oops, sorry. Bean, there it is, <laughs> to the phone type. So in that user class, there is a phone type, and that's home, mobile, right, or other. So Does the entry need to be bound to something, the phone number? Uh, oh, yes, thank you. Forgot about that one. Good eye. So that would be a text again, right? Mm -hmm. And that would just simply go to the phone. Okay. Thank you. I would have missed that. <laughs> All right. Well, so let's go ahead and run this. And let's make sure everything is working as we'd expect. So and then I guess we'll talk about the address view in a bit. Um, actually, I'm not going to even work, worry about the address at this point. Okay. Now, that's a little bit more to add on. So okay. I didn't really feel like doing that at this point. Okay? okay. But there you go. Look at that. There's all our data now being bound from awesome. this instance right here. So, so if I start changing this, you'll notice that it's not changing over here. Okay. And you'll also notice right here that this uh, part-time and full-time is not toggling the is enabled on the start time. Uh -oh. Yeah, boy, what's wrong with that, huh? <laughs> well, actually, I'm not going to talk about that quite yet. Okay, that will be actually be in the next section. We're going to talk about why these things are not updating. Okay, obviously, if I make the changes here, uh, maybe I change another one here to false, and then we stop and restart, those values will now be reflected. But changing them on the fly like this doesn't work because we're not informing the UI through any mechanism. And that's what we're going to have to do. And that's what we're going to do. Okay. So, okay. But you can see that things did change here. You see the values here did change. Okay. So we will talk about that in the next section. But one thing is I've created this instance of this user class here, right? Is there any way that I can get at it from the code behind? Right. So if I wanted to get access to that created component, can I do that? Yeah, actually, we can. I would need to do using on the adventure works entity layer. All right. That's the first step. Mm -hmm. Then I can create a property here that's of the type user. That's the one that we created. I'll call it user object here. And then here's how we can access it. In the key, the constructor here, after you've done the initialized component, I can go after the resources, right? These are the resources, and I can yep. look for the key called view model, and I can convert that to a, u a user class, and there we go. It'll now set that. Okay. So to prove that out, what we can do is we can come all the way back down here, and we can add a clicked event here. I'll call it save button underscore clicked. I'll hit F12 to have it create this down here. And I'll just simply do this. I'll do a system dot diagnostics dot debugger dot break like so. Let's go ahead and run this. 
All right, so when this comes up, we'll come in here. I'm gonna change a lot of this here. Let's call Paul Sheriff 1234, Paul Sheriff, and Sheriff at pdsa.com. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save now. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if I look at this user object and I hover over this, okay, all right, hover over it, there it is. Look at that. Okay. So the values are going one way. They're going from the UI back to the object. But we saw earlier that when I made the changes in the XAML to the object, it wasn't going back to the UI. Right. So obviously we need to do something to do that. And that's what we're going to cover in the next section. But there we go. We've got a little right. bit of start of binding up objects to our XAML. Excellent. Okay. So we're stopping here with the application a little bit broken <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but we'll fix it in the next episode so stick around and we will see you next time on visual studio toolbox